number 262, hardback hymnal. Let's sing the first and last verse of that. On our prayer list this morning, we've been asked to remember Steve Cheney, Bobby Cromer, Donnie Thacker, Logan Mullins, uh, Sherry Mullins, Mike Livers, Darlene Cromer, Chester and Louise Cromer, Sherry Mink, Donnie McFerrin, Maddie Wheat, Jeannie West, Delmer Messer, uh, Donnie and Diane Sanders, Liza Argenbright, Pat Rader, Kim Hickey, Jerry Robbins, Carlos Caldwell, Tina Rose, Fred McClure, Billy Haddix, Jamie Saylor, Baby Saylor, Owen Family, Dorothy Lovell, Carlos Bowman, Betty Miller, Herman Pittman, Brandy Meese, Minnie Kirby, Barb Dooley, Jeff Hansel, James and Paula and Peachy Boone, Ron Argent Bright, Juanita and Coleman Detheridge, Ron Eads, Baby Gabe, Jean Botkins, Joyce McComb, <coughs> Nakisha Garland, and the family of Nick Rainwater, and the family of Kenneth Adams. So uh, let's remember those in our prayers today. Number 262. <clears throat> Jesus, my heavenly King, loves me, I know. Praise <laughs>
sing the first and the last verse of number 201. In the field of wood wheels, it was brave and true. In the fight for the right, I would dare and do. Spend my days in the praise all the journey through. Let me live close to the each Oh! 
352 after the reading and prayer. 352. Thankful to see everybody out here on this cold Lord's Day morning today. We're happy to see every one of you all that's come out to be with us this morning. If you're visiting with us today, we want you to know that you're most our most honored guest, and you're welcome back any time you can possibly come. Our reading this morning will come from 1 Samuel chapters 21 and 22. I'll begin there in 1 Samuel chapter 21 and verse 10, and read down to 1 Samuel chapter 22 and verse 1. Verse 10 begins. And David arose and fled that day for fear of Saul and went to Achish, the king of Gath. And the servants of Achish said unto him, Is not this David the king of the, of the land? Did they not sing one to another of him and dances, saying, Saul has slain his thousands, and David his ten thousands? And David laid up the, these words in his heart and was sore afraid of Achish, the king of Gath. And he changed his behavior before them and feigned himself mad in their hands and spabbled on the doors of the gate. And let his spit, spittle fall down upon his beard. And said Axius unto his servants, Lo, ye see the man is mad. Wherefore then have you brought him to me? Have I need of mad men that ye have brought this fellow to play the madman in my presence? Shall this fellow come into my house? David therefore departed thence and escaped to the cave Adullam. And when his brethren and his father's house heard it, they went down thither to him. That the mistakes on my part that is reading 1 Samuel chapters 21 and 22, 10 through verse 1. That any mistakes on my part, that was that reading. So at this time, let's go to our Lord and our Father in word of prayer. As well as let this be at this time. At this time, it's a duty and a privilege to go to our Heavenly Father in word of prayer. Let's pray. Our most gracious Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for this another Lord today you have blessed us with, for the sunshine, the rain, the fruitful season. And Heavenly Father, we thank you for the good crowd we have this morning and pray that we can always continue to grow in the work of the Lord, Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father, we thank you most of all for your Son Jesus who came down from above, suffered, bled, and died on the cross for the sins of the world, that we through him may have eternal life if we would obey the gospel. Faith in to be. <coughs> Heavenly Father, we thank you for your book, which is a lamp unto our feet, a light unto our path, which is a road map from earth to hell. And Heavenly Father, we pray for the sick. We pray for those that have listed their names on the prayer list and others around the community who are home sick beds, hospitals, nursing homes, wherever they may be. Heavenly Father, we pray that you would reach down with your wide hand and long arm and restore them back to portions of their head, realizing that you are the great physician and the healer of all diseases. Heavenly Father, we pray for the widows and the orphans that you would assist them in a way that would be pleasing to this and thee. Heavenly Father, we pray for those who are bringing up children in the church that they would teach them the right way to go so when they get old they wouldn't turn from it. Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father, we pray for our preaching brother. We pray that you give him a ready, recollected memory of thy word as he stands before us today, and that we can understand it and take it home with us and learn all about it, Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father, we pray for those who have lost loved ones, who are suffering in bereavement over the loss of the loved one. We pray that you would comfort them in this hour of sorrow in a way that you know how. Heavenly Father, we pray for our land and country that you would always bless it, Heavenly Father. And Heavenly Father, we pray if there's one here this morning that's never obeyed the gospel, that they would before it's everlasting and eternally too late. Or if there's ones here that have obeyed it, that they've turned from it, that they would come back to you, confessing the wrongs, Heavenly Father, and being added back to the fold. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the air that we breathe and the water that we drink. And Heavenly Father, we thank you and pray that we would always fear you and keep your commandments, realizing this is the whole duty of man. And we ask this prayer in Jesus' blessed and holy name. Amen. 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 Amen.
uh, number 352, and we'll sing the first and last verse in number 352. When the Savior calls, I will answer. When he calls for me, I will hear. When the Savior calls, I will answer. I'll be somewhere listening for my name. Those, if you want to turn there and be ready to sing in just a short while, as always, it is wonderful to be at the house of the Lord, to be able to worship God with brothers and sisters in Christ. Uh, this is a, a, a wonderful privilege, and hopefully uh, each and every one of us considered it uh, a blessing to be able to be at the house of the Lord to worship God and to uh, study God's Word and to uh, uh, pray together, sing together, study together. It is a uh, it is such a privilege to be able to do that, and hopefully each and every one considers a privilege uh, also. We find in our reading this morning in the 34th Psalm, this is where David, he retells this story about his life and uh, all the things that he went through, all the things that he suffered. And uh, even though he, he suffered all these things, we found that he found peace in a troubled time. You know, that, that is something that we, that we all seek is peace, security, safety. Uh, from the beginning of time until today, we all seek those things in our life, in our families. We seek a certain amount of peace. We uh, desire safety and, uh, and security. And uh, uh, as a nation, you know, we, we try to deliver on that. And as a people of God, we also seek those things. And David writes about this time in his life when he suffered greatly. And, you know, when we think of David, we think of him as being a great king who had authority and uh, commanded many men. But we find here he was on the run from Saul. He was on the run from Saul. He was uh, disguising himself as a... Uh, uh, something like a hobo, a street bomb. He, he was uh, living on the street, so to speak. He was trying to get away from Saul. He thought his life was in danger. He went, he went to his enemy, the Philistines and uh, the people of Gad. And uh, he began to, at the gate, he began to claw at the door trying to get in because he knew Saul was close by. He was clawing on the door. And he had allowed his beard to grow really long to disguise himself. And he allowed the slobber or spit to get in his beard. I know that we think, boy, that is gruesome to think about something like that. But uh, this is the way David was. 
He was a man that was down and out. He was trying to get away from Saul, and uh, he was disguised himself as a, uh, as a crazy man. And uh, he was doing everything that, that he could to be deceptive. And, it, and he went to a people where they said, uh, Saul has killed thousands of people, but David, he's killed ten thousands of our people. And, uh, and instead of uh, Achish uh, 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 killing David or having him uh, put in prison, he said, I don't want to do, why do you bring a madman to me? He said, I don't want nothing to do with this man. He's crazy. He said, I don't have time to fool with him. And he sent David away. And we find that in a short while, uh, David went to this cave and his, uh, his uh, followers found him and restored him back to life. But David re retells this story in the 34th Psalm. And that's what we're going to look at this morning is the 34th Psalm and what David went through and uh, how that he continued to remain faithful to God and sincere in his walk upon the earth and never one time did he ever blame God for his mishaps or the things that happened to him that were uh, hurtful or that put him in situations that was dangerous. He continued to praise God for every situation that he found himself in and in those situations that uh, we might think that how could he do this, he still found peace in times of trouble. He was still able to find peace in times of trouble. And he starts out in the first verse. He said, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make its boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear of it and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord and he heard me and delivered me from all my fears. You know, this is David writing in a time that it seems like that there was nothing good going on in his life, but he was still able, he said, to praise the Lord. He was still able to look to God for guidance and strength and hope, and he never gave up because he knew God was with him. He knew God was with him during these troubled times in his life, and we find here that he said, I will continually Praise the Lord, and I will continue to magnify him even in my life, even when it seems like my life is worthless to all the world, God still recognizes me. God still knows who I am. God still knows where I'm at. And he said, I will continually uh, praise his great, his holy name, and I will still continue to magnify him by his life, my, by life. And it goes on to say in the fifth and sixth verse, they looked to him and, and uh, very radiant and their faces were not ashamed. This poor man cried out and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all of his trouble. Uh, we can see how the, the influence David had on those that were around him, how that he lighted up their life how that he gave others hope by his continual uh, faithfulness to God. Even in times when it seemed like that he had nothing, he continued to glorify God. And because of it, it had an effect on the whole room. It had an effect on everyone around him. And that's what we can do when uh, things are not going the very best. You know, if we continue to praise God, if we continue to hold his name up above all names that are mentioned in heaven and the earth, you know, we're going to have an effect on those that are around us. We're going to be able to affect those even when we're going through troubles is because we don't give up. It's because we don't uh, blame God, but we continue to praise his name. And this is what David did. He said, even in the worst of times, God is still taking care of me. He still knows who I am. He still knows where I'm at. And he's still blessing. He's still a blessing me in the, uh, in the present as he had in the past. God is still right there. And uh, he's still working uh, in, uh, in my life. And we find in verse 7 it says, 
The angel of the Lord encamps all around those who fear him and delivers him. We find in Joshua 5 and 14 where it talks a little about angels and how that angels works in uh, our lives today even though we can't always see them. Uh, we find that Christ is still over the angels. It's called Christo Christophany. And, and it talks about it here in uh, Joshua 5 and 14, how that Christ sends out his angels uh, to watch over and to guard his children. And we can uh, uh, read, uh, read in uh, 2 Kings uh, 2, 16 and 17 of Elisha where Elisha was surrounded by the Syrians and he thought that there was no hope. And he, he turned to God and he said, Alas, Master, he said, what shall we do? He said, we're surrounded by Syrians. Uh, we don't have any hope. We don't have any hope. What are we going to do? And uh, we find here where God spoke to uh, Elijah through the angels. He said, do not fear. For those who are with us are more than those who are with them. And this is what God said to Elijah. Even though it looked hopeless, it looked like a helpless situation, uh, an angel spoke to Elijah and said, those that are with us are more than those that are with them. And Elijah said, just let me see what you're talking about. He said, open my eyes and let me see. And the hills that were surrounded that city, they were full of chariots on fire. They were full of soldiers and chariots that were on fire. I mean, uh, there, the, whole, the whole mountain was covered with people from God. And Elijah, he just couldn't hardly believe his eyes when he saw all of what God was doing and how that God was taking care of him even though it seemed like a helpless situation, David remembered that. And David recorded uh, uh, this uh, wonderful happening here in 2 Kings. He talked about this wonderful thing that happened to Elijah and how that Elijah wrote this down. What a wonderful sight to see, to think that, uh, you know, for, a, for an instant there is nothing there. And now that there is a whole army of angels uh, just surrounded this mountaintop uh, where the Syrian army was at, you know, they was encompassed all about those Syrian soldiers. And the relief came to Elijah. And he was comforted by all of this because he realized when you're with God, even though you may be one, you're more than the whole army. You're more than the whole enemy. You're more than anybody else. If it's just you and God, you're more. You're more than enough to overcome your enemy. When Jesus is all that we have, he's all that we need. And we need to remember that. We need to remember that when we're going through trials and, and uh, tribulations. You know, God doesn't say we're not going to go through trials and tribulations, but he says he will always go with us. And with God, you know, he is always more than enough. And uh, this is what Elijah found out. This is what David found out. And uh, this was the reason that they were able to find peace in a time of trouble. And that's the reason that we can find peace in a time of trouble today if we trust in God we're going to be able to see those things take place and most of us have in our lifetime. We have saw good come to us time and time again, even though maybe we didn't realize it or didn't understand it. You know, we may have just brushed it off and said, well, you know, that was just an accident. That was just an accident. But that could have been God's angels watching over us because we find here God does have angels, and they all have special jobs, and Christ is the master of those angels, and we find here he delivered time and time again recorded in the Old Testament. And he goes on to say in the eighth verse, O oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who trusts in him. 
Blessed is a man who trusts in God because we find here uh, that uh, we're going to be rewarded for that trust. We're going to be granted the things that we need. And we find that in, in uh, Psalms 9 and 10 where it tells us once again, David said, Oh, fear the Lord, you his saints. There is no want to those who fear him. The young lions lack and suffer hunger, but those who seek the Lord shall not lack any good thing. And as David writes this, he writes about the lions that roar in the jungle. He said they go hungry day after day. They have to fight and kill for their food. But he said God's people always have food to eat. God's people are not ha out here having to kill for food. They're not having to kill each other for food. He says here God's people have food. They have clothing. They have a roof over their head. But the great lions, the kings of the jungle, they're out here on the prowl all the time looking for food, looking to kill, looking to... Uh, take something from uh, another animal. They're all the time on the hunt. But God's people does, do not have to go very far to find food. They don't have to go very far to find shelter. They don't have to go very far to find the things they need to live a common life here upon this earth. And that's what we find here. David promises. And David said, I've seen this over my lifetime. God's people are blessed. God's people are blessed, and he takes care of those who fear him and love him and obey him. We find here that they're blessed. And we find where Jesus writes in Matthew 6 and 11, where he says the, the model prayer here, says, give us this day our daily bread. And uh, we find here this is what we should be thankful for and not be concerned about tomorrow or next week or next month. If we are blessed to, today with the things we need, you know, we should give God thanks and not worry about tomorrow, but be thankful for the blessings of today. We don't know what tomorrow holds, but we know who holds tomorrow. And if God has blessed us for down through our lifetime with food and clothes, we shouldn't worry about what's going on tomorrow. But many people fret and worry about tomorrow, where they're going to, they'll say, well, where am I going to get this? Or where am I, what about today? Many people worry so much about tomorrow and next week, they can't take any comfort out of today. They can't, they can't thank God for today for worrying about next week or next month and uh, But we find here, Jesus said, just thank God for the blessings of today. And remember all the years in the past. Remember all the days in the past when you woke up, you had heat in your house. You had food on your table. You had a job to go to, uh, to work to help feed your family. And this is the way Christians, the people of God, should be. They should be thankful for today and not worry about tomorrow because tomorrow will take care of itself. And we need to be thankful for the blessings of today. And if we were, we wouldn't be worrying about tomorrow. We wouldn't be worrying about next week or what's going to happen. But we would be counting our blessings today and naming them one by one, as the song says. And as Christians, this is the way that we should be. We should not be like the world that goes around worrying about uh, everything that's going on. We should be taking care of today and making sure that our soul is right with God, and then we wouldn't be worried or concerned so much about the things uh, of next year or next month or next week. Or, or tomorrow, but we'd be thankful for today. And we would look back as David did as he wrote this psalm many hundred years later as he uh, rewrites his life during his period of time. He said, I was thankful to God for every blessing. I was thankful for God for every blessing. 
He goes on to say in Psalms 12 and 14, he says, Who is the man who desires life and loves many days that he may see good? Keep your tongue from evil and your lips from speaking deceit. Depart from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. He says this is the way that a, uh, that a man of God should live his life. It's to seek peace, desire good days, refrain our tongues from uh, saying things that are evil, that is things that are negative about God, and comparing ourselves to those that are in the world. And we hear Christians do that many times. We, we hear them say, well, I don't understand how that evil man can live to be 100 years old and God's people live to be 70. Listen, if you're a person that, uh, that is a Christian and you just live to be 70, you're better off because you're going to be with your Father in heaven. You're going to be with your Father in heaven and your suffering and pain is over. But a lot of people in the world don't see that. They think because you live to be 100 or 105 that you must have done something right. That has nothing to do with it. That has nothing to do with it. We see here uh, those that have a desire to live a long life. We find here and a life that is full of peace. You know, if you live 70 years and you live a good life and you live it in peace and happiness and joy serving the Lord, you've lived a long life. You've lived a long life. You don't have to worry about tomorrow. He goes on to say in Psalms 15 and 18, The eyes of the Lord are on the righteous, and his ears are open to their cry. The face of the Lord is against those who do evil, to cut off the remembrance of them from the earth. The righteous cry out, and the Lord hears and delivers them out of their troubles. The Lord is near to those who have a broken heart and say such, with a contrite spirit. So we see here once again, the Lord hears our prayers and he comforts us that really trust in him and that really believe uh, that he is near. He gives us comfort. He gives us courage and he gives us strength. He is there with us all the time, holding our hand, walking with us, and he hears our prayers. And he has delivered time and time again uh, uh, to make sure that we have the things that we need, that we're blessed uh, above measure. And uh, we can see here how that he hears the cry of the righteous, how that he hears the cries of those who obey him, how that he is near to each and every one of us, those that are faithful in his sight. We can see here how God heals our broken heart, how he helps us during the loss of a loved one, how he helps us and gives us comfort uh, over the days we get, uh, we get uh, stronger and we get to the point that uh, we can deal with those things because we know that God is with us, that God is helping us and the righteous live with the remarkable assurance that the creator of the universe is watching over them. You know, that, that is a, just a wonderful uh, idea to know that God is watching over us at all times and he cares about our prayers and he cares about who we are. Someone who created the heavens and the earth cares about who you are. He cares about who I am. You know, and that's, uh, that's, uh, that means something to me to know that God cares about me the one that created the heavens and the earth, the ones that I look at, the, the beautiful trees that change in the fall and then turn green in the spring, and it does it every year. Someone who does done all of this cares about me. You know, that means a lot to me. You know, there may be a lot of people here upon this earth that don't care about me, but the Creator does care about me. That means something to me. That means something to me when I go to God in prayer. My creator, he still cares about me. And he still cares about what I think. He still cares about how my heart feels and when it is broken. In 19 and 20 it says, Many are the 
afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers him out of them all. He guards all of his bones, and not one of them is broken. Not one of them is broken. The promise is not that we're not going to be afflicted from time to time, but he's going to see us through all of these things. He's going to see us through all of these afflictions, all of these heartaches, all of these pains. And he says here, not a bone is broken. And David was remembering this. He was remembering it and uh, how that he was running away from Saul, trying to find safety. He said, I suffered many things, but he said there wasn't a bone broken. There wasn't a bone broken, even though I suffered many things and I had to do many things to, uh, uh, to obtain safety. He said there wasn't a bone broken. There wasn't a bone broken. And he said, I suffered many things, but God was with me the whole time. God was with me the whole time. And he said, that is peace. That, that gave me peace to know that uh, as many things as Saul did and as many times as he tried to kill me, he said, there wasn't a bone broken because he was a man of God. He was a servant of God, and because of it, God took care of him. God took care of him, and God heard his prayer. And he hears us today. We just got to remain faithful. We just got to remain true to him and be willing to obey his command. As Peter says in 1 Peter 3, 13 and 14, he says, And who, and who is it who will harm you if you become followers of what is good? But even if you should suffer for righteousness' sake, you are blessed. And do not be afraid of their threats, nor be troubled. You know, don't be troubled by those that say things. Don't allow them to cause you to be discouraged. Don't allow them to say that your God is not listening to you because he is. Don't allow those that are out here in the world that say, uh, how could you continue to serve God? Don't listen to that, David says. And Peter says, even if you do have to suffer from time to time, don't listen to the naysayers. Don't listen to the backbiters. Don't listen to those because God is with you and he's not going to allow you to be harmed. And this is what David, uh, David remembered, how that God was with him all of these times. All of these times he feared for his life, but not once did he lose his life. Not once did he ever have an arrow, arrow go through his body. Not once was he ever uh, captured. He was close and could have been, but he always saw a way out. God always provided him a way out. And God promises us to guard our bones, to guard us, and to keep us safe if we trust in him. And this is something that we all uh, uh, should desire and thank God for, knowing that how that he blesses us, even when we don't realize it, that he is there. And his mighty angels are overseeing these things through Christ Jesus. His mighty angels are overseeing these things and watching over us as David realized he goes on to say, evil shall slay the wicked and those who hate righteousness shall be condemned. The Lord redeems the soul of his servants and none of those who trust in him shall be condemned. So we can see here those who slay the righteous or those who try to hurt those that are righteous, someday they're going to be condemned. But those who are righteous are going to live forever. Those who serve him and are righteous, David says, that trust in him, they're going to be redeemed and they're going to live forever. Those who do not serve him and those who hurt those that are righteous, we find here, David says, they're going to be condemned. David sees all of these things happening and he says those are going to be condemned. Those that try to hurt those that are righteous. Those that do things to those that are righteous, he says they're going to be condemned. Because we find in 1 John 1 and 7, it says those that walk in the light is his in the light. 
They have forgiveness of their sins. They have forgiveness of their sins. And uh, they stand anew in Jesus Christ every day. You know, that's a promise that God makes to every one of us. Even somebody like David, uh, that uh, uh, people thought he was a madman. People thought uh, that he was worthless. That, he, that he, there, there was no good that could come from this man at this time. We find that God redeemed him. And many may have thought he was worthless. Many may have thought that uh, he couldn't command a, an ant to uh, uh, carry a, uh, uh, an ins another insect. And the ant, as far as their size, is supposed to be one of the strongest insects that they are. These men probably thought David was completely washed up. But we find here... He was restored completely back to his health because God was with him. God was watching over him. Even when he was, uh, his beard was long, he was uh, slobbering or had spit in it and all other things in it. You know, that's one of the grossest things is to see people eat and get uh, food in their beard or their whiskers. To me, that's one of the grossest things that there is. But, uh, you know, sometimes people will do that on, uh, accidentally. But uh, David was doing it on purpose. He was doing it on purpose so they would think that he was mad, that he was crazy, and that, uh, uh, that uh, uh, so that nobody would harm him. And he played the part exactly right, and uh, they sent him away thinking he was a madman. But we find here, you know, that one of the greatest things about being a child of God, Paul says in Romans 8 and 1, and we need to remember this, is there is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. There is no more condemnation, that is, no longer are you condemned to a devil's hell if you walk in the Lord. No longer is there any more condemn, condemnation to you if you're in Christ Jesus. No longer are you going to be condemned, but you have the promise of a home in heaven. As long as you walk according to the word of God, the Bible says, no longer are you like those that are lost. No longer are you condemned, but now... Because of God, because of Jesus Christ, you have the promise of a home in heaven. You have the promise of a home in heaven and being able to live with Jesus forever and ever. And this is what David, uh, David uh, uh, was writing here. And the promise that he made to those that walk in the Lord. Because David went through many trials and tribulations he made many mistakes over the years during his life but he says Paul does that there is now no no more condemnation to those that walk in the Lord what greater promise what uh, what more desire I mean there is nothing greater that uh, God could offer us than to know that if we walk in the Lord we don't have to worry about hell. We don't have to worry about con being condemned to that place uh, where those that are evil go and they exist forever. We don't have to worry about that. That worry has been taken away in Jesus Christ as long as we walk in the Lord. And that's something that God promised us to every one of us. And every one of us should desire that. Every one of us should hope to uh, be able to uh, uh, achieve that. That should be everyone's goal because we're created by God. That should be all of our goals. Our desire is to walk with the Lord, knowing that uh, when we're walking with the Lord, there is no condemnation to any one of us. And many say, well, I just don't think that I can be a Christian. I just don't think that I can uh, remain faithful. 
Well, Jesus says in Matthew 11, 28, and 30, he says, that's not so. He says, that's just an excuse. He says, here, come to me, all you that labor and are heavy laden. He says, I will give you rest. So that's just an excuse. He said, everyone can come to me. He said, I will give you rest. That's just an excuse that people use today uh, to, to keep from being a child of God, keep from serving the Lord, keep from being the uh, servant of the Lord that they should be. He says, take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. So those that says, I can't be a Christian or I can't remain faithful, it's just an excuse. Jesus says it's not that hard if we want to be faithful. It's not that hard if we're sincere. It's not that hard. He said, I will make a way. That's a promise to all of us. David realized that when he was writing his 34th Psalm because he had been burdened down with uh, all kinds of things, concerned about his life, concerned about the next place he was going to live. He was living in a cave. How many of you all have lived in a cave? I've not. David was living in a cave, but his friends, his uh, uh, fellow comrades in arms, they found him, they went to him, and they restored him back. But he was living in a cave, and he still said, Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for allowing me another day upon this earth. Thank you, Lord, for waking me up. Thank you, Lord, for giving me rest. Then he goes on to say, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. See, people say, well, it's too hard to be a Christian. Well, you can't get that from the Bible. You know, that's just an excuse that people use for not serving the Lord, for not obeying the gospel of Jesus Christ because Jesus says that it's easy and that uh, uh, my burden is light. He says it's not hard or that it's not heavy. It's just because people don't want to give up their sins. People don't want to give up the evil that is in their life. And because of it, they say it's hard. The Bible says it's hard to live the life of one who is wicked. The Bible says it's hard to live the life of one in sin. The Bible says it's hard to live a life away from God. And if that's what you're doing this morning, Jesus says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man will open that door, he says, I will come in and sup with him and him with me. Yes, this morning, your life can be changed. Your life can have the promise of a home in heaven. Your life can have the hope of salvation, the forgiveness of sin, a place with Jesus. Isn't that, the, isn't that the desire of each and every one is to have peace in a time of trouble? When you have trouble in your life, wouldn't it be great to be able to know there's, a, there's going to be a certain amount of peace? There's going to be a certain amount of peace even when it seems like the roof is coming off the house. You know, we still have a certain amount of peace because we have Jesus. And when you have Jesus, you have it all. You have it all. You may not have a, 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 the, biggest, or the best car or the biggest house, but when you have Jesus, you have, all, you have it all. And when we realize that, when we realize that, we'll take time to thank God and to... Uh, uh, continue to uh, praise his name and lift his name as David did. Even though he was in a cave, he said, I praise the name of the Lord. We, uh, we, it's a shame that uh, many times uh, that we think that because we don't have this or we don't have that, that uh, God shows favoritism. Just look at where David was at. Just look at where David was at time and time again. And he said, no matter the situation that I'm in, no matter where I'm at, he said, I am praising God, and we should too. Maybe there's one here today 
that is outside the realm of safety, that is not a Christian, that has never accepted Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior by obeying the gospel. The Bible says that, that we must hear the gospel, as it says in Romans 10 and 17, that we must believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God in John 8 and 24, that we must repent or turn from the, the ways of the world. But we have to change. And by changing, we realize that we must confess that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Jesus says in Matthew 10, 32 and 33, he said, if you will confess me before men, he said, I will confess you before my Father in heaven. But he says, if you deny me before men, he said, I will deny you before my Father in heaven. Then in Acts 2 and 38, he tells us that we must be baptized for the forgiveness of our sins. We find that where the disciples were sent into all the world, he told them to go into all the world in Mark 16, 15 and 16. And he said, he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. So we see here all of these things are necessary to be saved. All of these things are necessary to be saved and when we do that, the Bible says that we come in contact with the blood of Jesus Christ that cleanses our sins, that washes away our sins when we do that. If we've done that and the Bible and we have strayed away from the life that we should be living, that we know is right and pleasing in the eyes of God, the Bible says we need to come back, confess that we've sinned, how the prayers of the church. The Bible says that we can be restored back to the family of God. We can do that this morning. We can do that this morning. And if God is calling you, why don't you come while we stand and sing the song of invitation? chapter 11 verse 24 reads and when he had given thanks he broke it and said take eat this is my body which is broken for you this do in remembrance of me let us give thanks for the bread great wonderful almighty heavenly father we thank you for this bread which represents the body of Jesus Christ that was sacrificed for our sins we pray that as we partake of this bread 
that we examine ourselves and partake in a manner well pleasing to thee. Jesus Christ, great and holy name we pray. Amen.
1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 25. After the same manner, also he took the cup, when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye, as often as ye drink it, in remembrance of me. Let us give thanks for the cup. Great, wonderful, almighty, heavenly Father, thank you for this cup, which represents the blood of Christ, establishing the New Testament. Father God, we pray that as we partake of this cup, that we examine ourselves and partake in a manner well-pleasing to thee. In Jesus Christ, great and holy name we pray.
separate from the communion is the collection. 1 Corinthians chapter 16, verse 2. Upon the first day of the week, let every one of you lay by him in store as God has prospered him, and that there be no gatherings when I come. Let us lay by in store at this time. Number two will be the last song this morning. Number two, if you want to turn in your books and uh, be ready to sing in just a few moments. As always, uh, it's been good to be here to, be, uh, to worship with brothers and sisters in Christ. I don't know if anybody had uh, realized how low David got. Uh, as some would say, he got lower than a snake's belly in a wagon train rut, and uh, still God pulled him out. Story that uh, I think sometimes we probably don't realize the servants of God, how they suffered, but how that God always still knew who they were and uh, still was with them, even in, uh, in times that uh, uh, seemed like that there were no hope, they were still able to find peace, and I think we can do if we trust in God and uh, lean upon Him during all of our troubles and strife. been wonderful to be here. If you're visiting with us, we really appreciate you being here. Come back anytime. Uh, remember our services here Wednesday night. Brother Eric Bullock uh, should be here in the second uh, Wednesday, and uh, Brother Dale will be doing the speaking next Sunday, which will be the second. So uh, if you can, come back and be with us. Remember their radio program at 8 o'clock on Sunday morning with uh, Blue Springs, uh, the TV program at 6.30 with Brother Brad Hickey, and uh, our paper every week, hear the, the signal, and uh, uh, try to tell others about the gospel of Jesus Christ, and that, and that light that shines in you every day, everywhere you go, try to allow that to reflect upon others, and let others see how happy and blessed you are to be a child of God, and also, if you go on there, YouTube, or Facebook, and watch those videos, hit the like button or the view button because uh, by you doing that, it, people are going to say, well, boy, that must be a really good video. That must be worth watching. And uh, so they'll go on there and watch it. And uh, so if you would, uh, uh, if, when you, if you do watch these videos that we put on the air, if you would do that, then I think it would encourage others also to uh, uh, like it or watch it. good way to help spread the gospel. So just, uh, if you would, remember that. And uh, remember all those that are sick and suffering in hospitals at home. Uh, there was uh, a, a large prayer list, and uh, we surely need to remember them. Remember our flare fund, the shelter fund. And uh, as always, if any has any questions about anything that's taught here or that we do, 
always feel free to ask. Whether you agree or disagree, listen, you're not going to make us mad. Uh, you might help us to uh, uh, grow, might help us to learn and to be better servants of Jesus Christ. And uh, I know it's been on the minds of several here that it's about time we had another dinner. I know what me and, me and Hayden have been thinking about that for a while. And, uh, but uh, our belly button's touching her backbone and all those kind of things. And uh, we're, needing to, we're needing to eat. So uh, if not this month, maybe next month, we can have a dinner up here in the shelter. I mean, uh, uh, it's, uh, it's going to have uh, cobwebs in it and things if we don't start using it. But uh, we need to uh, think about that and try to have us a dinner next month. Day so that uh, uh, it'll, it'll uh, help us survive through another month. So uh, let's uh, think about that and uh, also remember our business meeting today. The brethren who are interested in that can come back in here as soon as service is over. We'll discuss the business that the church needs to discuss and uh, hopefully we'll be able to uh, get those things done in a peaceful, uh, loving, caring manner as we always have. And Soon the service is over, uh, a few birthdays and things like that. So, uh, if you would, we'll stand and sing, and we'll uh, take care of that. Number two, first and last verse of number two. Come, we that love the Lord and let our joys be known. got a birthday today, Hayden's got one, and Bernice has got one tomorrow, and uh, also it's Veterans Day this week, and